Okay, welcome everyone. We are joined in our workshop preparation today by Professor Dimitrios Bohales. Dimitrios is a professor at the um, University of Bournemouth, but he's currently also a visiting professor at Hong Kong Polytech University. Now, the reason um, we have invited him and he has kindly agreed to join us is that he is also the longstanding editor in chief of Tourism Review. And it is in that capacity that Dimitrios has kindly agreed to answer a few questions for us today. Dimitrios, did I miss anything in your introduction? No, I'm just not the long standing editor. I just took over in 2017. So I think I'm about four years into the longest journal of, of tourism, the Tourism Review. Uh, but, but it's, yes. No, you didn't miss anything. All right then. Um, so what we have done is we have asked um, for a few questions to forward on to you. And one of them was that students were wondering if there is a specific format that they should follow in reviewing a paper, whether there's anything that's more helpful to editors than others. Well, um, normally when you go into, uh, in, when you go to the answer, how you're presenting the review back. Uh, there are five or six questions that they're normally about literature, the methods, uh, the implications, the findings, um, the style of writing and things like that. So uh, they should follow uh, each journal has got a different kind of style and requirements and they should follow each journal um, uh, requirements. But I think overall they need to be uh, helpful and they need to kind of develop their argument with the author so they should the role of a reviewer is primarily to help a, an author to improve the paper so um in that sense they are goalkeepers and goal uh and goal and 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 goal openers doorkeepers and 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 door openers so they should evaluate the paper and decide whether the paper has got any value. Is it new? Is it something that people would like to read? And once they've done that, uh, they should provide feedback on how the paper can be improved so it can be published. Uh, there's a trap in that. Quite often, inexperienced reviewers are doing that. They, they, they get into a situation, then they try to write the paper for the author. So they say to the author, the paper that they would like to write themselves. And this is a trap quite often. We see that happening often. I think reviewers should, should understand that the author has written a paper already. And it is basically we're evaluating that paper rather than another paper that can be written in the future. Mm -hmm. OK, so and it's, it's also being kind to each other. We need to be kind to each other. We are all authors, editors, reviewers. I'm, I'm, I'm an author as well. I'm writing uh, papers all the time and I and, and you see some of the reviews that are coming back, uh, that they're very helpful, and you see some that they're not. So we really need to try to be helpful to each other. Thank you. Another question that has come up is, where should reviewers draw a line between minor and major revisions and characteristics of a paper that would lead one to actually reject it for publication? I think this is a little bit difficult to actually define very clearly. And eventually what's happening is that the editors make these decisions. But I think, I think, the, I think minor revisions are things like language, um, things like um, you need to look into that kind of thing. Something that is something that can be done in a week, it's a minor. Something that needs three weeks or four weeks or two months of uh, uh, of changes, it's a major. Okay, yeah. so um, minor review, minor revision can be done in a week. If you sit down in a week, you should be able to do it. Uh, if it's if it's methodological issues, if you say it needs more analysis, if you say you need to rewrite all your literature, if you say that you have missed quite a significant amount of um, uh, quite a significant amount of literature, then it's major. And when it's a rejection, it's a rejection is when the methods are wrong. Uh, it's when there's nothing new. Uh, and it is when 
the argumentation does not add to theory and to practice. All right, thank you. Uh, the next question was, what if a paper that I am asked to review is not in my immediate area of expertise? Do I accept to do the review? Yeah, I think that this is happening often. Um, and I think it's a matter of judgment. You really need to understand, do you know anything about this, this area? If you know nothing about this area and you cannot have any intelligent comments, then you should decline it and you should go back to the editor and say, look, this is not my area. So I don't know if you're qualitative and the entire paper is quantitative and you understand nothing about the about the methods, perhaps you should decline the, the, uh, the review. Having said that, um, papers are written for everybody to be able to read and understand and and get benefit. So if it's not your immediate um, if it's not your immediate area, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to review it because you, sooner or later, you may need to read this paper. Does it make sense to you? Does it add anything? Does it tell you what to do in order to actually understand this, the subject area and, and improve your knowledge about this? And you don't always need to be the expert on things. Uh, and that's specifically, especially for new areas. So if it's, if it's something like, I don't know, if it's something like technology that things are changing all the time, so we are we are looking to streaming now and the impact of streaming on 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 marketing. So if you don't know what's streaming, I don't think that you're going to review the paper. Uh, having said that, um, you may actually make a disclaimer to the editor and say, "I'm I'm reading that as a scientist, as someone who, when reads this paper, should be able to understand mm -hmm. what the paper is about." And that's my conclusion. And that's OK as well. Yeah. Have you got any specific advice for first or second time reviewers? I think the most, the most critical thing is to stick with the review process. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in tourism review and most of the other journals I know, because all the editors, we speak to each other. Um, people are OK to review the first time. But then typically on tourism review, a paper will go through three or four rounds of, of review. And what you find is that after a while, um, there's a declining kind of uh, uh, willingness to review a paper on the second and the third round. And I think this is really annoyed, annoying because what has happened is that you have done a review, you have suggested something to the author, and the author has gone away and has done that. So we need you as, an, as a reviewer to see whether the authors have followed your advice. Because if you don't do that, then we need to go to other reviewers and other reviewers have got new perspectives and we get to author, the authors to start again with a new reviewer and new comments. And that's very unfair. So I think the most critical thing for me is that you stick with the process. The second thing is that as an author, when you are publishing something, you would have received about 10 to 12 reviews of your paper altogether. Okay. So that means in the bank of the reviewing system, you owe 12 reviews. I've got some authors that they, they are very keen to send me their papers in tourism review to be accepted, reviewed and accepted. <laughs> but when I send them to do a review, uh, they're quite busy and they don't have the time to do it. And of course, they are going to the blacklist, okay? Because if you are not prepared to be part of the community mm -hmm. to give and take, and you're only prepared to take, I don't want you to have. I don't want to have your your contribution to this review. So I think I think um, reviewers need to kind of understand that they are, we are all part of the ecosystem. We give and we take. Um, and I know a lot of authors when they get to the, the reviews, they get really upset with the reviewers because of their comments. But the way to look at it is that it's free consultation. Someone is giving you free consultation mm -hmm. and is trying to improve your paper. Uh, and in that sense, I think it's the responsibility of the reviewer to stick with the process, to make clear decisions. The other thing that really annoys me as an editor is that um, on the confidential bit that is coming to me, the reviewer says, I don't really like this paper and I think it should be rejected. But then when they write to the authors, they're quite polite. And they say, yeah, probably 
uh, so they are telling me one thing and they're telling the author another thing. Mm -hmm. So I need to make a decision where it goes. And quite often I take, I take things from the one side to the other, um, as most of the editors will do to help, mm -hmm. to help the process. Okay. Yeah, important advice. The next question is about the role or importance of doing peer review in career development. So how can um, early career researchers use peer review to, for example, learn more about research or build their connections? What's in it for them besides gaining experience? I think getting experience is very important because when you are criticizing someone else's papers, you learn how to do your own. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the most most effective way to understand how to do your own papers when you are forced to actually look for uh, good practice or bad practice on on other people's papers so that's one thing the second thing is that uh, you build a relationship with editors let's face it you know you really want friendly editors to have a nice relationship with friendly editors so if you are not reviewing for tourism review, if you are invited and you don't, then the editors would not be very friendly. Uh, and you know what that means. So you really need to engage with, with the system and to be part of the system. And you are learning from doing that. And eventually, uh, as, as many of you know, I'm looking now for, I'm restructuring the editorial board of uh, the tourism review after four years and i'm looking for new associate editors and i'm looking for new people on the editorial board and i put out the criteria that I'm, i'll be using so contribution to the journal is very important have you written in tourism review have you reviewed for tourism review have you reviewed promptly within the three weeks that we ask you how many reviews have you done and, and eventually when you climb up, if you're a young, if you're a, a, an early career researcher and you're climbing up and you become a member of the editorial board, you become associate editors, you become editors eventually, um, you build your career up. And that's the argumentation that you have to get your promotions from, I don't know your system, but it's going from, I don't know, lecturer, senior lecturer, uh, principal lecturer, uh, associate professor, professor, whatever. Um, it's that kind of esteem factors that give you uh, the promotions and they give you the seniority and they give you the ability to actually um, uh, be, um, what's the word? To be authorized and to be uh, recognized for the work mm -hmm. that you do. Is that something you would specifically look at if you were on the appointment panel for a very junior colleague? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah. I'd like to see that I've been reviewing for analysts of tourism, says tourism management, tourism review. I'd like mm -hmm. to see that I'm on the editorial board of those journals. And I really want there to see good journals, not bad journals. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, when I'm, when I'm evaluating for professorial positions, I'm looking for uh, senior positions in editorial boards. Mm. Yeah. So if someone if someone is applying to become a professor and they haven't done associate editor editor of a big journal, um, it's something that you say, mm, okay, perhaps they haven't they haven't progressed through their career. Yeah. All right. So these are the questions that we had prepared for you. Is there anything? You would like to add before I stop the recording? Uh, no, I think I think it's a great opportunity for uh, new researchers to engage. And now there's a lot of resources on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, on a lot of other colleagues. There's uh, we're sharing a lot of information, and I think it's a great opportunity for people to engage and to come forward to us and say, "Look, I'd like to be a I'd like to be a reviewer. I'd like to be a member of the editorial board." And I promise to do one, two, three, four, five things. Mm. Uh, so for the editorial board, I'm asking people to uh, evaluate about six to eight to 10 papers per year. Um, and I, you know, positions on editorial boards are not kind of gifts that we give away. The positions of responsibility for people 
uh, that they are prepared to do the work and uh, and be part of the community. Mm. And I think that is the opportunity where people, if I was a career, an early career researcher again, I would look into which journal do I belong to. So what is my home journal? Where would I aspire to publish? Mm. And I'll make sure that I review papers there. I'll make sure that I, I communicate with the editor. I make sure that I'm engaged in this conversation very often. That sounds like excellent advice. Thank you very much, Dimitrios. I stopped the recording now. <laughs>